up you guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here just welcome my name is Gemma Jade but today we are going to be discussing the Kersey Village time slip as I continue my research into shadow entities extraterrestrials and all sorts of other entities that feed on us and who might very well be after our souls I decided to take just a short time out and get into one of my other most favorite subjects for this channel and in general and that's time slips I've covered just a couple of few so far and there always seems to be a really good response from you guys and I simply find them fascinating as I basically find everything that I cover on this channel, right? All things supernatural, paranormal, extraterrestrial, otherworldly, Gemma's world. Before we get into today's video though, I just want to say that everybody that's been hitting me up for information or advice or wanting to talk about shadow entities or any other kind of phenomenon that you're dealing with, don't stop. That's totally great. Just be patient with my replies. Send it to my email if you want to set up a face-to-face -face video call. Email back and forth with me. I have no problem helping you guys out to the best of my ability. My email information will be in the description box and I'll let you guys know at the end of the video. One more thing before we get into today's video though, I want to let you know it is sponsored. Yes, and it is sponsored by LA Nail Reserve, Nail Reserve of Los Angeles. It is a vegan and cruelty-free gel soak off nail polish okay you do need a uv lamp but i got a really cheap one off amazon for like seven bucks and it did the job guys so i put one coat on my nails of each okay so base coat top coat base coat color and top coat right and don't let my poor nail polishing skills because of my shaky anxiety um throw you off because the colors are actually pretty amazing if you look this is aqualicious and they even show you on top, look, it's the exact color. There is absolutely no difference. It has such cute little names too, like text me later and, you know, girls night out. I should have written down some of the names, but you can go to their site because there will be a link in the description box. I also used the precious and that is the pink one coat guys, one coat. I've had it on for about a week and a half. It doesn't chip. I'll show you the color I have on my toes. I'm not going to show you my toes right now. Now I like to have long fake nails on but I will keep this polish on my toes and I guarantee you I guarantee you and I'll keep you updated my pedicure with this stuff will last half the summer if not longer all right so far it's been a week and a half it hasn't chipped they don't chip they don't crack off and I do dishes every day you guys know I'm a housewife as well as a YouTube creator dusk at sea guys I adore this color it's my favorite color it's a green. It's absolutely beautiful. The one they sent me, I haven't tried yet, is called Cherry Soda. And I think of this as kind of like a date night type red. I just absolutely love it. It's flirty. It's fun. So what I did was I took the base coat. I did one coat, put it under the UV lamp for 90 seconds. Then I did my color, the top coat, each one under the lamp for 90 seconds. It dried even with my cheapy old lamp. And I'm just amazed at the beauty of the color, the accuracy of the color. This has such chunky glitter in it. It's not like that little, like, I don't know. Do you know how when you get glitter nail polish, you're usually disappointed because there's not actually like much glitter or sparkle to it. Look at that. Okay. And again, my nail polishing skills, no bueno, but don't let that stop you in the description box. You will find a link to nail reserve, Los Angeles site, and you will get 50% off your entire order with code Gemma J capital G E M M A J guys let me know if you go let me know what you order Sh send me pictures email text me pictures of the colors that you choose because I am definitely going to be going back there and getting some more colors thank you so so much nail reserve Los Angeles for sponsoring not only this video but the Gemma Jade channel and brand in general um I can't appreciate you guys enough I feel so thankful and blessed and thank you all for taking this couple of few minutes to listen to me discuss the sponsor because that is how this channel is going to go forward faster and help me create better videos for you guys. I'm a little nervous. Now, let's get into today's video and discuss what has come to be known as the Kersey Village Time Slip. So many of us have heard of time slips before and maybe some of us have possibly experienced them before, knowingly or not. That's the thing with time slips. It's one of those things like if you didn't experience it yourself, then most likely you're just going to have to decide for yourself if you believe each individual story or not. Most of them, I believe, and I also believe that a lot of us have these time slips or glitches, but they're so quick that we don't notice them or they happen to us in what we consider to be a dream or a nightmare and we end up dismissing them as such. 
This is one I find very interesting and also very believable, but let me know what you all think in the comments below, please. Time slips are instances where either a person or a bunch of people seem to pass through that veil that we're always talking about. The veil between space and time in our own reality and some other reality altogether. Sometimes we are brought to the past and sometimes just an alternate reality where things are kind of the same but just different enough that we can sense something is wrong or off. Though still quite rare, I'm starting to see time slips and glitches much more these days than ever before and not just in like the time slip stories um, YouTube creators where they put together like the user alleged user experiences like actually seeing them in like clients and like you guys talking to me and even in my own life too when I take a walk in those woods over there but I'll give you guys some of those stories coming up soon time slips seem to be yet another phenomenon that's occurring more often in this day and age and as always too I'm not too sure if it's just because we have access to other people's accounts of them now with the internet if we're able to better document them or why they're happening more Maybe it's that veil I'm always talking about that's thinning. I'm really not sure either way, but they do tend to be extremely bizarre and they often leave the witness or the victim, for lack of a better word, experiencer maybe, they leave them frazzled, obviously, and sometimes terrified or scared with not much of any explanation as to what in the world just happened to them or why. So a small group of young men in England allegedly experienced one of these time slips and it's what is being called today the Cursey Village Time Slip. Let's go back into the fall of 1957, late October to be exact, and I'll gladly interject here to call attention to when this is said to have taken place, a time when the veil was said to be most thin and therefore access to other dimensions and realms and also the spirit world is most likely to occur. So what I mean by this is everyone says on Halloween the veil is the thinnest. Yes, but in my experience and in my semi-professional opinion, the veil starts thinning in the beginning of October and just keeps going right along until the 31st. But that's just me. Three cadets from the Royal Navy went out to Suffolk in the English countryside and were simply supposed to participate in and carry out a basic map reading exercise. No GPS or sat nav back in those days, you know? So the cadets' names were William Lang, Ray Baker, and Michael Crowley. No relation to our beloved Crowley on this channel, most likely. And their mission was to follow a route through the more scenic areas, recognize their assigned locations, of which there were several, map where their checkpoints were, take down some notes on what they saw and observed during all of this, and then go back to where they originally came from and report what they had seen and took notes on to their superior officers. The countryside through Suffolk was especially picturesque on this bright and sunny day in October of 1957, and the young men considered their obje objectives simple enough and easily obtainable and therefore reasoned it wouldn't take them very long to complete their mission and return to report back. Along their way, they passed the hamlet of Kersey, which at the time was a delightful and endearing little village, which was populated by only a couple of hundred residents, if that. Kersey was also well known for its rural streets and buildings left over from actual medieval times. It seemed to be just another normal day in the quiet little village and as the men looked on they could hear the church bells ringing and see the smoke coming out of the chimneys of the aforementioned quaint little houses. Kersey was one of the assigned points on their maps in which they were supposed to go into and observe it but here's where things start to get bizarre and it got that way in the blink of an eye it seems. The church bells were no longer ringing and even the birds had seemed to have stopped humming their previously very loud tunes. It even seemed as though the wind had stopped altogether and there was no longer any sound at all in or around this little hamlet. It was eerily quiet and it seems as if the three young navy men noticed it immediately. Something was very wrong here. Side note, guys, this is so, so similar to my Glimmerman encounter and encounters with all different kinds of otherworldly phenomenon you guys have experienced and sent into me and that we've talked about. It's like this happens all the time in the woods before being approached by or bearing witness to one bizarre thing or another or a predatory creature, right? The leaves weren't even rustling in the streets nor making a sound as the now on alert men walked over them. So you know how leaves crunch under your feet? It was quiet enough that they should have heard that and they didn't. The branches of the trees stood still themselves and it was like everything had suddenly been put under some sort of spell, one that made silence fall down completely around these three men. Ducks who were only seconds ago frolicking in a nearby stream were now completely motionless as if frozen in time, along with even the plumes of chimney smoke also spotted and permeating the air just seconds before. The ducks 
were stone still as though they were statues and the chimney smoke that they were just looking at and observing five minutes, not even before this, there were no more, there was no more of it. There weren't even any people out walking despite the mildness of the day and the sun burning brightly down on the streets all around them. It was beautiful out. As they entered the village proper, it seemed all but deserted and one of the cadets would describe it thus, quote, it was a ghost village, so to speak. It was almost as if we had walked back in time. I experienced an overwhelming feeling of sadness and depression in Kersey, but also a feeling of unfriendliness in unseen watchers, which sent shivers up one's back. I wondered if we knocked at a door to ask a question, who might have answered it? It does not bear thinking about, end quote. As they went about exploring the village, they noticed there were no vehicles anywhere, no bicycles, and even no telephone wires for those who had the luxury of a home phone at the time. They were actually more common than I thought at this time, as I realized when I just looked that up. I'm still reeling from imagining some ducks just standing perfectly still. It gave me the chills when I read that and when I thought about it. So, no wires to run the telephone system in the streets were just cobblestone and broken up, not paved in cobblestone as they normally would have been and had always been for as long as anyone there could remember, including the cadets. It had an old-fashioned kind of feel to it, the roads and the bare skies and streets, and it gave the cadets a sense of eeriness, and it even scared them a little bit. As I mentioned earlier, Kersey was known for having medieval-style buildings, but what they saw now was different. There seemed to be nothing at all around them that was modern, including the houses. All of the homes were of a medieval style, all hand-built and timbered frames with greenish glass windows covered with a film of like filth and grime and muck. Crazier still was the fact that the season seemed to no longer be fall and now had completely changed. As one of the cadets would describe it, quote, it was verdant and the trees were the magnificent green color of one finds in spring or early summer, end quote. The men decided to approach one of the evidently deserted buildings and when they peered inside, they were creeped out to see that they were staring into the window of some obviously long ago deserted butcher shop. There were rotting cow carcasses, among other things I won't even mention because it's gross. The men would again describe this creepy scene and state, quote, there were no tables or counters, just two or three whole oxen carcasses which had been skinned and in places were quite green with age. There was a green painted door and windows with smallish glass panes, one at the front and one at the side, rather dirty looking. I remember that as we looked through that window in dis disbelief at the green and moldy green carcasses. The general feeling certainly was one of disbelief and unreality. Who would believe that in 1957 that the health authorities would allow such conditions? End quote. They peered into other buildings as well, and the ones that appeared at least outwardly to be residences that should have had people and families living in them were completely deserted as well. There was no sign anyone had lived in any of them for at least a while. There was no furniture, no curtains, no sign of life at all. It was almost as though either one of two things had happened. Either the residents who once lived there got up one day and suddenly abandoned their homes and took every scrap of anything they ever owned with them, or no one had ever lived there at all, which means the men weren't possibly in Kersey. Though small and quaint as it was, was a well-known town and was populated by at least a couple of hundred people. If you remember just a few moments ago, there was smoke coming from the chimneys in most, if not all of these now completely empty and seemingly abandoned homes. What in the world was happening here? The men decided they needed to find some sort of well-known landmark and get their bearings, thinking that somehow, however unlikely it was, they'd gotten lost maybe? They followed their maps to where the church would have been and should have been, but it wasn't there and seemed as though it never had been there at all. This church was the most famous building in the whole town, and the men had also just seen this particular landmark from outside the town only moments ago. They saw the steeple and heard the bells ringing just as they had seen the chimney smoke. These three cadets were downright and flat out scared at this point and decided to nope the heck out of there as quickly as they possibly could. They would later report that the second they stepped out of the village proper, everything suddenly went back to normal. The chimney smoke started coming from the homes again and the church bells could be heard ringing from at least a mile away. The trees once again swayed in the breeze that was blowing again, the birds chirped and the ducks frolicked along in the pond in the crisp and cool breezy autumn air. Perhaps strangest of all was the church tower and how it could be seen once again from outside the village as it hovered over the rest of Kersey. The men, now extremely confused and bordering on the verge of absolute terror, made their way back to their base and excitedly, but nervously, reported everything that they had observed to their superiors. That was their mission, after all. 
One by one and all together, they reported the high strangeness of what they had just bore witness to, whatever it was they had no idea, in the small village of Kersey. Their superiors just shrugged it off, and although they confirmed the three cadets had in fact reached Kersey, as it was evidenced by the marks they had made on their maps and the notes they had taken along the way, their accounts of all the strange happenings and everything else were simply brushed off and not given another thought. As was usually the case back then, especially with the military in the 1950s and 60s. I mean, be that as it may, the men who experienced all of it couldn't stop thinking about it. But what could they really do? They were simply ignored by anyone who would listen and their superiors kept telling them to just forget it and not to talk about it anymore. So they did, or at least they tried to forget as best as anyone can something like what they had witnessed. In the 1980s, though... A paranormal researcher named Andrew McKenzie, was, who was an investigator for and a member of the Society for Psychical Research, received a letter from two of the cadets, William Lang and Michael Crowley. Obviously intrigued, McKenzie met with the two men and even went to the village with them so they could show him where everything had happened and better explain what they had experienced that fall day so long ago, yet so vividly fresh, still in both of their minds. The more the men explained to Mr. McKenzie, the more convinced he became that they were telling the truth and that they had witnessed not only something possibly paranormal, but also something truly spectacular as well. Remember, this happened in the late 50s and even the 80s when they brought McKenzie into this type of thing. It wasn't very common, and if it was, it definitely was not commonly talked about. Glitches in the Matrix just weren't a thing yet. Andrew McKenzie was an investigator after all, and as much as he wanted to believe the former cadets at just their word, he couldn't take what they were saying at face value, and so he looked deeper into it. What he found was absolutely fascinating. It turns out what the men had witnessed was very much historically accurate. The building with the deserted cow carcasses had in fact been a butcher shop at one time. However, in 1957, when the men were visiting, it was supposed to have been a private residence. Other observations William and Michael had recounted and claims they had made also historically lined up with the history of the town. It was considered information not likely known to the two cadets at their age and at the time. There was no internet, there was no Google, and therefore how would these young cadets ever even know the location of a random butcher shop that hadn't been there for decades? Decades, centuries actually, or what the whole place would look like before the famous church was even built. Why would these young men even care about such a thing? Eventually, after wholeheartedly believing that the men had in fact experienced a time slip, Mackenzie was even able to pinpoint exactly what time they had slipped into. It hadn't been decades after all, but like I said, it had been centuries. The seemingly total desertion of the village and the fact that the tower hadn't been built yet led him to surmise that the men had slipped back into the 1400s in Kersey when it had been devastated and absolutely wiped out by the Black Death or more commonly known here in the United States, the Black Plague. Ever research the idiotic reason that horrific plague had to happen to all of those people? It had to do with the killing of cats because of a version of satanic panic to rival what happened in the 80s here, but if you want more on that, let me know and I will happily do a whole video on it. It's very dumb, but also extremely fascinating, the domino effect of killing cats in a time when rats and nastiness were rampant. Anyways, yes, the three cadets had inadvertently traveled back into the 1400s. Andrew McKenzie even included the cadets' experience in a book he wrote in 1997 called Adventures in Time, which contained nothing but examples of time slips just like the one the cadets had in Kersey. Skeptics say that glass, especially green glass, would have been far too expensive in the early 1400s, so it's unlikely that most, if not all, of the buildings would have used it for windows like we do today, or like they most certainly did back in the 1950s. It was also brought to light, notice the quotations, the meat was very expensive and a luxury, and therefore there wouldn't have been so many cow carcasses as the cadets described in a small butcher shop for such a tiny little hamlet as Kersey was in the 1400s and in the 1950s. After all, it was even smaller and less populated centuries beforehand. Is there a rational explanation, or did these men go through a time slip and end up in the 1400s? There is absolutely and obviously no way we could ever know for sure, but I'll certainly let you all in on my opinion, which is probably no secret at all, and say hell yeah they did, and perhaps despite the glass windows and extra riding carcasses, I believe that they did indeed move through time somehow. How? I don't know, but to possibly explain the glass windows and carcasses, I'll posit this. Perhaps, just maybe, 
They weren't actually transported there, but were shown the devastation left behind by the Black Plague for whatever reason. I don't have a clue. So maybe the butcher's meat was exaggerated, or how do we know Kersey didn't at some point supply meat to surrounding towns and villages or something like that? Maybe there were farms nearby, or maybe Kersey was farmland back then and grew cows. I don't know, and maybe just maybe these three Royal Navy cadets weren't material experts and just thought what they were seeing was glass. It had, after all, been covered in grime and dust and whatever other muck was there, right? So how would they really know? I don't know, guys. I'm just giving you all my opinion. Please feel free to give your opinion respectfully in the comments because I am really looking forward to hearing them. That's all I have for you today, guys. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the content, if you enjoyed hanging out with me, if you enjoy time slips. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Go on over and subscribe to Moon Bear Oracle, my kind of up-and-coming project work in progress channel. I appreciate all of you guys who are over there supporting me, even though there's not much content coming yet. I am getting there. Thank you so, so much. Nail Reserve Los Angeles for sponsoring this video. Guys, you got to check it out. If I could recommend, I would recommend actually all of these colors, but my favorite color is green. So Dusk at Sea and The Precious is pink and sparkly. Don't forget, we also have aqualicious and cherry soda all right i love 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 these they take 90 seconds to dry one coat and they come out bright and vibrant or dark and lovely don't forget to order yourself the base and the top coat okay those are kind of important but as long as you have a uv lamp you can also do it without the base and top even though it is recommended click the link in the description box to nail reserve los angeles's website and when you order you will get 50 percent off with code gemma j capital g e m m a J. Guys, let me know if you choose any colors and send me pictures and all that jazz. If you have experiences with time slips, supernatural, otherworldly, paranormal, extraterrestrial, please send them for my listener encounter series to gemmajadeparanormal at gmail.com. If you would like a personal intuitive oracle reading from me, email me at moonbearoracle at gmail.com. I don't have a website yet for my manifestation and intention sprays, but I've got nothing but good reviews. Guys, if you're trying to manifest something in your life, okay, if you just want to feel better, if you want to open your third eye, I left a short video that I did about my new up and coming business in the description box, 1895 includes shipping in the continental United States. I will mail that out with a free gift from me. Check out the, the very short video and see what it's all about or contact me at moonbearoracle at gmail.com. I'll give you all my info. If you want to have a manifestation session with me, that's the same email address. You can contact anything you guys need. Hit me up. If you want a one-on-one, -on -one, one hour video session, either a manifestation session, just a discussion session, or a one hour face-to-face -face Oracle reading, intuitive Oracle reading, personal from me to you with you, email me at moonbearoracle at gmail.com. I also do remote ones as well. That's the best way to get in touch with me. Tuesday nights live from another dimension. It's me, Ghost Dragon ZW and Crowley. And that's on this channel from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern where we talk about things and stuff, stuff and things. Wednesday nights, if you don't know what I'm talking about, what's live intuitive oracle? What's intuitive oracle? What's a personal reading? Come on in from 7.15 to 11.15-ish p.m. Eastern time on this channel for about four, four and a half hours. I do a one card intuitive oracle pull a weekly reading for anyone and everyone that comes in first come first serve check it out i'll leave a link to one of those in the description box as well i would love to see you all in there if you want to make a donation paypal cash app amazon wish list gift link and my patreon will also be in the description box if you donate 20 dollars or more a month you will automatically every month receive your own remote personal intuitive oracle reading from me i'm like forgetting what i'm saying guys Please be kind to each other, be kind to yourselves, and never accept anything less than others being kind to you. Always go in grace. Smile at a stranger. Thank you so, so much for checking this video out and subscribing and liking and commenting too. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.